Welcome back to Jim's Jeeps. Today we're going to be taking a look at the TJ drum brake system. Very similar to other Jeep models uh, if you have drum brakes on the rear axle. And uh, mine uh, drums making a little clunking sound. I think the shoes are not adjusted quite right. We're going to take it apart and take a look and see, see what we find. Thanks for joining us today. What do you think? Time to work on the Jeep? Yep. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take the wheel off. I've already raised the vehicle. It's uh, supported on jack stands underneath the axle tubes. This is a 19 millimeter or three quarter socket. Yours should be similar or the same. wheel off just set it aside and here's the drum we can see it's pretty loose of course the tire holds it up against the flange the axle the uh, yeah the axle flange um, and so this drum here is going to come right off yours may not you can see there's a lot of brake dust in there and uh, it looks a little bit crusty it certainly has a lot of brake dust buildup on it um, that could be why it's not uh, not performing very well right now. Let me get a couple other tools, I'll be right back. Hey, what you probably want to get, and you can uh, get these at any auto parts store, or even eBay or Amazon or whatever, is a brake spring tool. It's uh, specifically meant for removing springs and uh, hardware on a drum brake system. Um, and uh, it works pretty well. You can use a screwdriver and you could possibly use pointy nose vice grips or something like that. Um, I've done that in the past. It's a little bit harder. Things can let go on you, and um, but you know, it does work. So we're going to take this apart and find out what's going on here. If I can get the spring off. Just put it in there and twist it behind the spring uh, and it'll let the tension off. And these are just kind of sitting in these holes behind here. Um, and once you get those springs off, things up top should be loose now. Should be. And this one's going to bite me a little bit. That's okay. This one has the adjuster cable on it too, which is this right here. I'll show you that in a second. The shoes themselves are held on with, um, we call them nails. It's not really nails. It's kind of like a, just a, kind of looks like a nail. But uh, I'll show you how to get those off here in a second. Actually, I am going to be right back. I'm going to use long reach needle nose pliers, but any kind of needle nose pliers would be fine. Um, and I'll show you a closer view of this in a second. But basically, the pin is on the back of the, of the uh, backing plate here. And then there are two springs on each side that hold the, the shoes onto the backing plate. And very simply, you want to compress that spring a little bit and just turn it about 180 degrees. You'll see there are little there are little um, it's just a little slot in there. So there's just a little slot in there, and um, you can see the nail, or what they call the nail, um, has a little head on it. 
And so when it comes through the backing plate, it goes through that slot. And then to engage the spring so it doesn't pop out, you just turn it, um, I guess it's 90 degrees, not 180 degrees, it'd pop off, but, um, and that holds it onto the backing plate. So now this shoe over here is free, except for the adjusting mechanism uh, down below. And we'll get to that in a second. We'll take off this other side real quick. Comes apart real easy. Just take your time. Take a picture of it with your phone too, in case you don't know how to put it back together. That's always a big help, but I've done these so many times. Um, pretty good at remembering how they go back together. Um, and then the shoe itself will separate from the vehicle. And it looks like this. And that uh, little star wheel down below is the uh, uh, automatic adjuster, quote unquote. And um, if they're not set up just right, uh, they don't adjust just right. So uh, I wanted to take these apart, clean it up a little bit, and just see how we're doing. The shoes themselves actually look pretty good. They still have a lot of meat left on them. Um, they've been on the vehicle now, I don't know, just not, not almost two years now, I guess. Um, a couple other things to look out for, um, for ease of use on this kind of thing is on the backing plate, there are touch points. I'm pointing to one here, there's some up top, and you'll see where the brake rides, it'll kind of be clear, uh, you know, scraped off, bare metal probably. Um, and then this other lever over here is the parking brake, which is attached to the cable. You don't really ever have to mess with that. Um, that fits in this slot up here um, and uh, is a separate mechanism for if you needed to uh, use the emergency brake um, this actually forces this bar to drive the shoes uh, apart in the back. And uh, when we put it back together, I'll show you how that goes. Um, other than that, we have just totally disassembled the left brake, left rear brake on this uh, 1998 TJ. Um, the YJ is similar. They're a little bit different. Um, I guess it's older technology, maybe. Well, it's certainly an older vehicle, but... Um, the, uh, it's, it's exactly the same, but totally different, <laughs> I guess. Um, same technology as far as springs and everything like that go. The, the mechanism is very similar, but the layout is a little bit different. So definitely when you get in there, uh, take a picture of it or have certainly a manual available. Um, you can look up stuff online too, or you could watch this video. All right, I'm going to get some brake clean. We're going to clean this up, grease it up adjust it, check the adjuster, and then kind of get everything back together. Uh, I'll be back in a second. All right, so now we're gonna clean off the backing plate and so forth with um, the Sure Shot. These are great. Um, you can buy Brake Clean in about a gallon containers on Amazon uh, and other places, and it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying it in the can. Put it in here um, and then fill this with compressed air I took the nozzle off this because I want some high volume spray right now, um, and it it uh, it does a great job. And I think at the end of the day, um, it's a lot cheaper than buying it can by can, um, unless you can get it on a good deal somewhere else. But uh, that's what I do. Check it out if you're interested. Make it rain. Um, Interestingly enough, you can still see, let's see, I bring it over here, some of the purple grease I had on the back plate. Um, but you'll see that this, this just cleans it all up and uh, all that stuff will kind of almost just disappear, which is, you know, clean, brake, brake clean, cleans your brakes, right? So, um, let's just take a towel and just kind of wipe everything down. Uh, it's going to get dirty again, but uh, it's okay. So just wipe everything down. And you can see now these parts a lot better. Here are the uh, pivot points for the back of the brake shoes. And there's two on the bottom as well. I want to kind of get everything reasonably clean. You're not going to get it 100%. All right. 
Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and grease this back up. We'll get the pins uh, reinstalled holding the shoes on and uh, we'll continue that in just a second. Another product I use is this uh, Permatex. Actually, this says Napa on it. I think, I, I guess I got it at Napa, but it's a Permatex brand. Um, purple Ceramic Extreme uh, Brake Grease. Um, it's good for calipers. Anywhere where there's a rubbing surface on a brake, um, even the little brake hardware pieces, I'll coat the back of them to prevent um, rust jacking, stuff like that. You definitely want to use this so your brakes will slide easier. So we're going to put some on those touch points. There are six touch points, three on each side. You don't need a lot, it'll stick. You know, like I said, there's stuff on there from before. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to check this adjuster uh, and probably grease this guy up too here at the bottom. Um, you can see this adjusting screw. It seems a little notchy, uh, maybe a little rusty. So we're just going to pull this out carefully off the bottom of the shoes. Leave the spring engaged. Um, and then it's just, just a screw. Um, turns in and out. So we're going to grease this up a little bit as well. You can see the screw and it's actually a reverse thread so to unscrew it it's uh, actually tightening it. Put some grease on there. And the other side of it is just a little pivot it rides inside the thing here, so we're going to put some grease on there. And then we will put it back together. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. I probably have too much on here right now. Uh, if it stays in that little tube, it'll, it'll help prevent corrosion. Now it's turning pretty good. Take a towel and just kind of wipe it off a little bit. Actually, maybe spray some brake clean on it, get some of that dust and dirt off of it. All right. Now we're gonna put a little grease on the bracket of brakes as well. Try not to get it on the the shoe material. Uh, again, three three spots on each side. I got the automatic adjuster reinstalled. Parking brake fits in this little slot at the top over here. Um, can't really turn it to the camera right now, but make sure that's engaged before you get this side on. Otherwise, uh, really difficult to get it back up in there. Then take a spring. a little keeper on it and the whole world's falling apart here.
and then take the spring, grab it with the pliers again. I, and you, you can use that brake tool. I just, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I just, you can see better and twist it on better, I think, just doing it by hand like that. And uh, you're good to go. Now we'll do the other side here. Same thing. Grab the little spring and its holder. Went through the back of the backing plate to the front and put the spring on. Grab some needle nose pliers and get this guy back on there. fight me a little bit. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. we go. This little piece on the top here uh, fits. There's a little machine face for it. Uh, sits on the pin, the center pin there, in front of the shoes. Just like that. And that lets the shoes ride on the back of that. And the springs that we're getting ready to put on here um, will hold that in place. Reseat that in a second. Okay, here's the tricky part. This adjuster cable pivot has to have this little punched out part in that hole. If this little punched out part is not in that hole with the spring engaged on it, it'll ride outside that hole and give too much slack to the cable it does two things. It adjusts your brake when you pull up on it, or when, when the pressure is such that the brake engages and pulls up on it. They'll never adjust. And part two is your parking brake will be super loose. It'll be like, what happened? It's not, I need to adjust my parking brake. The reason is because this little, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's almost like a, a, a machine pin or something must fit in the brake shoe with this brake or with the spring holding it on. If those two things aren't there, it is not going to work right. Um, I it was driving me crazy when I was doing brakes on this vehicle about four or five years ago. All of a sudden, they wouldn't adjust anymore, and the parking brake would not engage anymore properly barely engage, barely enough tension to pull the brake. So that's the reason. So you want to get this in there, get the spring started anyway, and then make sure, absolutely sure, that that piece is in that hole being tucked up in there. And I'm going to get the cable on here first, but if you don't have the, that situated properly, Again, your first first sign is going to be your parking brake is not going to function properly. See, now, now it's engaged. It literally sits right on top of the uh, metal part of that brake shoe there. And we're going to get this also over top. Put it on like this. So flat side down. 
over that pivot point. In the back, you'll notice that Right, that bar goes in there across the top. I just lost my spring. This goes back in here like this. And we're going to put the tension back on this guy. Put the spring back on. All right. Making progress. Now, shoes are all greased up. Top section is engaged. That little plate uh, kind of looks like a little anvil or something. I don't know. Rides in front of the brake shoes on the pin. The adjuster cable is right here. It is on its pivot. It's jammed in there. Caught up on something. goes down and hooks up to the lever down below. I'll try to get you a close-up of that or at least a picture of it so you can see what that looks like. The adjuster screw is uh, not frozen. The uh, wheel cylinder here is, is uh, fairly new. I think I put that on the last time I did the brake job on this vehicle. It's probably five years old now. Boots look good. These rubber boots on each side double check those these are like eight bucks too if you need to replace it you just take the brake line off the back be careful with that because they'll probably crack if it's rusted at all and uh, you swap it out it's just held on with two bolts on the back of the backing plate here so let's put the adjuster cable back on the adjuster bar and we will Get it adjusted up, put the drum back on, and then that's all there is to it. Okay, here's the lower side. Here's your star adjuster. This is what we took out and greased up. This little tab rides on the star adjuster. And when, every time you back up and there's a, a tension on the brake, it will pull up on this and try and advance this star a click or a half a click or however many clicks. Additionally, when you pull on the parking brake, same thing, it'll pull up on this. So if you cycle your parking brake a few times, it's going gonna, it's gonna to try and adjust your drum brakes, which is, which is good. This is by design. Again, the parking brake um, uh, rod uh, to force the top apart when the uh, little bracket that we put on earlier, which sits up in this hole up here, uh, right here in the back that tab will be in that little slot and uh, that's how it works it will force the shoes apart and there you go and you can hear that click that's the brake shoes actually going out so the way to adjust them is um, you can keep taking the drum on and off uh, until it's just just barely touching the pads or there is a rubber stopper in the back back here that you can take out and then put a, a, a either a screwdriver or just an adjusting tool to turn this uh, same way so let's uh, let's get the drum back on see where we are and then adjust it from there I just cleaned off my drum um, 
you want to check the inside surface there is a little bit of a score on this one not much it's i can't even get my fingernail on it um, check it out also it, a lot of times dirt and other debris small rocks from four wheel and stuff like that will get up in their brakes and it'll just tear these up pretty quick um, so if you hear a grinding sound or something like that just pull your wheel off pull the drum off and and see what's going on in there um, not terribly expensive to replace um, and perhaps you could get it turned but uh, yeah just check it out before it gets to be a problem and uh, so to see how far apart you are from where you should be to where you are that's still way too loose it's not even dragging so we're going to tighten this star up a little bit Same thing, not there yet. I don't feel any drag yet. Take it out some more. Might be getting close. close not quite you can hear it rubbing a little bit not much too far. <laughs> can barely get this on now. Mm -hmm. Getting close. That may be too far. I'm gonna call that good right there. If you put them out too far, you're gonna overheat your brakes. They will warp. Uh, they will become oval shaped. And every time you step on the pedal, they will pulsate. They'll still work, um, but you're in for a brake job before too long. So don't over tighten. Uh, you want some slack in there, but you want it close such that when you engage the wheel cylinder, the brakes will be applied to the to the drum surface stop the vehicle let up on it let's pressure off brake shoes retract because of the springs so that's it we're going to get the wheel back on torque the lug nuts down to 100 foot pounds and then that's it the other side is exactly the same um, take it apart clean it up it's probably in the same condition this one was in uh, i'm not going to put that in this video you guys know how to do that now because you watch this if this video was helpful today please consider subscribing as always thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next episode of jim's jeeps